Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, where we cover all things SnowRunner, Expeditions, so forth, <laughs> so on. All right, uh, tonight we're taking a look at the Azov 67096 Atom. This is a new truck that's available in the store. You might complain about it being $4, because, geez, I had to pay for it. But let me remind you that that's still about the same price of a cup of coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. So it's really, honestly, not that bad. Uh, Mike and I did some testing on the truck last night, and it I don't have a lot of stuff unlocked yet because I'm testing, so I'm testing with the worst motor. Um, but we did some testing last night and found that this truck is averagely good. Um, no race suspension. It comes with decent off-road tires. Um, you can obviously put better tires on it. But as I find with a lot of these trucks, they sometimes do better with their stock tire, even though the actual like on-road is average, off-road, excellent, mud, good. And then you come down here and these are excellent, excellent, right? They still seem to handle better, over, better overall with these tires. So one thing that's weird about this truck is it does not have larger tires because there's no race suspension. So you're kind of stuck with 50s. And honestly, in some of the deeper water crossings and stuff, you're going to wish you had bigger tires, but it doesn't come with them. Um, so let's take a look at the add-ons, because this is really where things are a bit different. You have this huge uh, repair and refuel unit. The back part, the small area, is for the repairs. So it, quote-unquote, only carries 300. That's still a decent amount of repairs. Though, if you're trying to rip, uh, repair a truck or something that, what like a mission where you have to restore the truck that may not be enough repair parts but it's still a decent amount and then of course you have a monster fuel tank 2500 liters of fuel which it's a great amount and then you have four spare wheels um, i did pop a tire on this actually on one of my tests but anyway that's that's probably the unique unit for this this truck and you can use it as a rescue truck also, like a lot of the Russian trucks, it gets the uh, trunk roof rack, which is really nice. Plus, we have some nice features for the actual body. You've got lights, and you've got this the Xavier cage that you can put on it, and a nice bumper that's caged. It doesn't really do anything for the actual truck safety. Let's see if it's, I think it's front bumper. Yeah, you see the Defender with some extra lights. You can get a lot of lighting on the front. Miscellaneous. Gives us horns. There's the Xavier protector, though. That's kind of nice. You can take that off. And you can also have it like a highway truck. <laughs> and that comes with some extra lights also. So that's kind of neat. But I prefer to have the off-road set up. Though it probably takes it makes it a little bit top-heavy. But it's a long truck. I don't think you have too many issues with that. Uh, also available... This, to me, is probably the main frustration with the truck. This guy could be just a hair longer, <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure this is how it is in real life. This, as much as it looks like it's a four slot, it is not. It's three slots. And what they do is when you put stuff in here, it actually gaps it. It'll put one thing like here, one here, and one here, and then there's spaces between them. <laughs> and it's like, oh, man. If they could have just made it a four... A lot of the trucks that are single better three, but it makes it that the twin steer just has a one up on this truck as far as cargo capacity. However, it still has the trailer hitch, so you could pull a behind, you know, pull behind a trailer that carries four more slots, and it's capable completely of doing that. We've Mike and I were pulling seven seven uh, loads of seven items and had no problem getting through the map. So. Uh, here we have a large, large crane, log loader, two slot and three slot flatbed. I don't know why you would get the two slot. However, you could do this. So this is kind of cool. So we're going to put this flatbed on. And then, um, if you get the crane, now this is an interesting thing. The crane actually goes on the back of the truck, which is how a lot of European trucks are set up. Iveco stuff like that. And then we have our typical saddle high, saddle low. So you could technically even do this. You could take a fuel tank 
And I think, oh no, you can't. Okay, so it doesn't let you do both. That sucks. Anyway, those are the options. You got, I don't know why you'd pick the smaller of the logging carts aside from maybe we can do that and then the log crane. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> How about this in the log crane? Does this do that? Yeah, there we go. So you do have a log loadout. You can actually load your own logs and then you can pull another trailer behind and also have a large amount of logging going on. So that's pretty neat, honestly. I mean, that's a, that's kind of a cool setup. However, I'm imagining this is going to be very tipsy when it's like that. Let's take a look at the different paint schemes that are available. We have the typical Russian purple. Oh, and the body matches, by the way. I must have, I forgot to put the trunk back on. Give me some. This seems to be a popular scheme in this game. <laughs> purple, pink, and blue. Uh, and then we also have, I, I like this one. This is one of my favorites. Um, this is real outgoing. We had this one on before. And then we also have, this is pretty cool looking. Orange and blue and white, very uh, 80s. Uh, Ewing, Patrick Ewing colors, Boston, well, not the Boston Celtics. What was it? He was on the, oh my God, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, and then we have the base scheme that is like the, def oh, the default paint scheme. I totally freaking hiccuped. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this thing for a spin. Uh, we're going to make it morning so that we can actually see the truck. Well, I'll do afternoon. There she is. So as far as handling goes, she's got all-time diff lock. So the turning radius is not brilliant, um, but it's not bad either. And it's, you know, it can you can back in and out. It's, once again, it's a little shorter than the twin steer, and it definitely turns a little bit better. If you're used to driving any of the uh, twin steering vehicles, you're not going to have any trouble with this thing. Micah took the eight-wheel drive Tatra that's all-wheel steering, and I took this and followed him, and aside from the fact that somehow he just drives faster than I do, um, we were... <laughs> I didn't have any trouble navigating the places that he did. That truck does turn a little bit better than this one, but it's also shorter, so... But it wasn't it wasn't real noticeable. So you can see on the road, it, hands, it handles well. It's not a very fast truck. It's kind of a mid-speed truck, but it's designed for off-road and, and bad road usage, so... Here's the cab. Somebody was saying that this is actually based on a real world. Um, I was gonna say Tatra, but not Tatra. Um, oh. It's the same company as Cam is. Maybe it was Tatra. Like basically this is a DAF. Um, But that would also be Tatra, because Tatra uses the same parts. But we do have the Tatra brand in the game, so I'm not sure why they would not just call it Tatra. Um, so anyway, who knows? There's some licensing issue going on there, and they don't want to deal with it. So, But yeah, I was going to say, the Tatras are the off-road trucks. Let's see. I'm gonna, I want to take us into a bit of a mud area here. So we're going to cross the bridge and go over to that farm and see what we see. But we are just finishing up Wisconsin. For those of you that follow the series on my channel, uh, we've had a lot of fun. We finished Alaska on YouTube yesterday or today, and Wisconsin is beginning. So we're finally into Wisconsin and getting it done. And actually, as far as progress goes, we aren't finished, but we got like one or two missions. I think we have one mission, one big mission left. Um, but. For YouTube, it'll be a couple. I'm going to try to release. I'm starting to go to a one a day because to get caught up because we're so far behind. So you can see here, we're getting onto the dirt roads. No problems whatsoever. Most trucks don't struggle with this. And we're using the tires. Oh, good. We have a farm field. Usually they're mucky. So that's what I'm looking for is like deep muck. Let me strand the truck in the mud. And it looks to be a gorgeously mucky field, too, so that's good. Let's take her in. So all-wheel drive. I'm going to put it in low gear just to keep the speed down. And we are still not in all-wheel drive, and the ground is still holding. Trust me, we'll find some muck on here if we don't get it here. All right, so now we're starting to spin in. 
Once again, the diff lock helps. And the tires are great. Once again, they're they're really, really good tires. That may bug some people. It seems like they give you trucks, though, with the DLC trucks that always have good tires. So. And we haven't gotten stuck yet. Close. I think you're about to go in there. So now we're in all the way. So let's go ahead and this is the worst way to do it, but I'm going to keep the, the RPMs down. You might want a little more spin with these tires. There we go. Oh, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I mean, this is about as mucky as you get aside from river crossings. Um, where you have a current and that's where I'd like to get to one of those too so we can I can show you how it does in the river but yeah it pulls through is it stellar no is it as good as the twin steer no the twin steer is a little bit better but the twin steer has an unfair advantage in that it is much taller I think it's a 67 inch wheel on the on the twin steer when it's fully upgraded so You got a lighter truck with bigger tires. This thing's got a lot of a weight on it right now. So I think it performs averagely good. Um, is it something that you have in game already? Yeah, I mean we have we have other Azovs, and we have other we have other trucks that that have the same you know eight wheel drive capacity, and can carry different things. Obviously, you have the Azov Arctic. Some of them get even much like much larger tires. So this is more of a collector's truck. You don't have to have it. However, I will say, uh, if you're starting a new game and you want to kind of have a truck that does everything and just to get right in, this is a good option. If you're not playing on hardcore and you get all your DLC trucks, this one has great tires on it. So it's one of the better options. I still think if I were to rate the DLC trucks, top truck to bottom truck, I would say at the very tippy top is going to be the Mastodon because it's a brute. It's got a ton of different options and it doesn't get stuck in anything. Uh, the next one down is going to be the Russian uh, Crocodile. The Crocodile is just, once again, an excellent truck. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I have not upgraded the motor like I said at the beginning, but you'll notice we've gone all this way and played in the mud and driven around and I've only used like an eighth of a tank. So this truck is really really good on gas that's another benefit to this truck over some of the other trucks in the game so keep that in mind uh, but anyway uh, I would say that this truck I'm trying to think of what else they've got out there the Kenny the Kenworth W990 they've improved they they, they buffed it and so that truck is actually really good now um, but I would say this truck probably comes in before it because it has the ability to have all-wheel drive so, and then the, to me, the 990 would be the next most powerful truck, number four. The Jeep pack is irresistible because I love Jeep. Um, so, yeah, those are my picks. But this truck would be in the top picks for sure. It's got, a, you know, good abilities. And Mike and I used it quite handily. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but we do have that issue with it and it is like we said it is a little bit top heavy oh there's a truck down there it looks like or something uh so you got to keep that in mind it is top heavy we'll just recover let's find some muck and once again you can see it here next to the twin steer just how much smaller the tires are it really it's not even comparable to those tires <laughs> they're like almost double and then of course the kenworth is even bigger tires the W or the whatever that is, the six six forty three, I think. All right, I found a mud pit just across the street. Let's head over there and uh, put this to the test. There's the road over there. So yeah, once again, you got to watch the top heavy. This is not going to be a great like all the way off roading like rock climbing truck. And that's not you know you're putting into a place that you know it's really not meant for that kind of stuff. But it's going to be a severe off roader. And so once again, I think it's a good beginning of the game truck. It doesn't really, I guess where the people are going to have an issue paying for it is it doesn't really add anything new to the game. But then again, what trucks do? They are all trucks. So, so yeah, 
I'm happy with it. I personally think, you know, once again, I like supporting the company. It's not, they could, you know, they could be jerks and be like, you know, some of these other games out there that want 50, 60 bucks for their products. Uh, or like Train Sim World where they're asking, you know, 25 to $50 for a single engine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this for it's real stuff out there, man. The airplanes in Microsoft are at a minimum ten dollars. They're usually twenty to thirty dollars for a decent airplane. Uh, World of Tanks, starting at four dollars, and they go up to to sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety bucks for uh, different tanks. So here, you're getting a very usable truck for the in game. Gives you you know a couple new options as far as crane configurations and stuff. Cool rescue trailer. Good good tires and just a new truck for the cost of a cup of actually cheaper than a cost of Starbucks coffee Starbucks is now five dollars a cup so you could either have a cafe mocha or this awesome truck that you're going to use in game probably more than once probably off and on as you do the Russian maps you know it's always nice to have a bunch of different trucks and have different plays so anyway I'm all for it as you can tell. You can see they were cut through the mud, no problem. This is a pretty swampy area. Whenever you see the cattails, that means uh, uh, trucker beware. Um, obviously there's real deep mud that you get stuck in and, and it, it does okay. Just like any truck. Uh, it has a little bit better chance than some of the trucks at breaking free, but Some of the, the the smaller American trucks are going to get stuck, but this one, she's doing pretty good. So once again, I don't necessarily run these trucks into the ground, uh, but I do test it to see how it's going to work for my setup and, and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I find that this truck is very usable. And once again, the gas situation is excellent so that makes it a much higher more useful truck if it gets good mileage with the base engine you just keep the base engine in it and and use that and most of the time it has the power to do what it needs once in a while pulling up a really big hill with a full load and a trailer full you may have some issues and may want to upgrade the engine a bit but for regular usage the engine's just fine um so yeah so that's my thoughts on the Azov, Adam. I don't think you're going to be disappointed if you get it. And it is a very usable truck. And, you know, hopefully not a regret truck. I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't see anyone having regrets with this truck. It's, it's a good truck. And it does well. Those are my thoughts. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. And uh, I will see you next time. Don't forget to check out our series. Like I said, we got a long standing 220 plus episode <laughs> SnowRunner series that's still going. And I have a couple compatriots who join me uh, on a weekly basis and we make more episodes. And they're just keeping rolling. And I'm, I'm going to go, because we're so far behind in where I am and where we are on the recordings, I'm actually going to start releasing SnowRunner videos every day pretty much. So. More SnowRunner content coming, and we're going to just saturate the channel until we get this stinking game done. Have a good one, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye.